gloves like you're having a physical or something like that. No gloves. How old are you, Russell? Well, Brian, I'm uh, 18 years old. 18? Yes. Hi, you're 18. Is it on? No. It's not on? So, yeah, just it's telling me that um, the light's off real quick. There you go. The light's off? Is Should it be on? off or on? Yeah, keep it off. Oh. Keep it off? Okay. Yeah. There you go. So the light should be off. Awesome. Um, you don't look at me. I cool. am <laughs> So Sebring, have you been here before? Never before. Never before. You're familiar with the history here? Uh, I'm aware of its uh, <laughs> the history as an American endurance racing track. Yes. Yeah. Are, where are you from? I'm from New Jersey. OK. You don't sound like you're from Jersey. You don't talk yes, like no. this. You no, know, no. <laughs> Vinny, no. I'm from Jersey. Yeah, I mean, I think it's so cool when you go down to pit lane, you look up along the building and you'll see you know different race winners and stuff and there's so much history here um speaking of history your history motorsports wise give me a little bit of background well it all started pretty much when i was born because my dad was always a racing fan really yeah he okay. always uh wanted to expose me towards it but he never got the opportunity himself i'm a race car driver um i'm from a non-affluent community in new jersey city so i pretty much didn't have the funds to really begin my racing career the, mo the way most kids yeah. do um Pretty much had to work for it, and my dad said, "Okay, you got good grades in a report card. We're going to take you to the local karting track." I started out there, and I ended up meeting a lot of you know great people. I ended up a being able to like network, and um, I won the league race straight off the bat after I did my first karting school at that track. Kept on winning, kept on showing my potential, kept on working for it, and that's what I love about racing. It's a great opportunity to really apply yourself, um, even though there's a lot of factors involved. If you work hard, there's definitely nothing that stop you. So I ended up winning over that, at that track and I ended up um, talking to that coach and we started a local karting team for outdoor sprint karts, which is like you know the tag yep. of the world, the road taxes of the world. And I was able to start competing regionally and I ended up doing really well, flipped up to nationals. Um, but of course I couldn't really get the funding to go to nationals. So I continued to race regionally until I could just save up and do my first national event. And I only won so far because um, racing is a very expensive sport. Well, I, and, and I think maybe the, the better term is expensive business, because it, it is a business, right? Oh, I mean, yeah, you look at it and you're like, yeah, I've, I've, I've got talent, but the business side of it is, is difficult. When you look 10 years down the road, yes. open wheel, closed wheel? I am absolutely open to anything, Brian. I absolutely just want to be racing and in any way, shape or form in my life. What's the magic? What, what's the magic behind the wheel? I mean, you talk to a golfer and he talks about hitting the perfect shot or this, that, and the other, and you're out in the weather. To somebody who just drives to work, yes. What's the difference? You know, I mean, we all drive, right? I mean, we all get in the car and we drive to work or school or whatever. What's the magic in racing? The magic behind the wheel is being able to know where the limit is and go past it. You have to see death in the face <laughs> and keep going. You just have to drive that corner like no one has ever done before and know and believe in yourself the entire way and know that you can do it. Race wins or championships? Absolutely race wins. Really? Actually, that's an interesting question. <laughs> I have to say, I have I got to say you. race wins because okay. you can win a championship, but ultimately it's the races themselves that count. People are going to remember what you did on the track and not necessarily who won the championship. I, a good example is Fernando Alonso. He hasn't been winning championships recently, but he does amazing things on the track. People remember that. Absolutely remember that. People can barely remember who won the championship in Formula One maybe like six years ago yeah. off the top of their head, but they will remember what Fernando Alonso did in the, the last Phenomenal race. drives, right? Absolutely, yes. Awesome. Um, manufacturer or team owner? So Roger Penske calls and says, drive for me, or Honda calls or Chevy calls and yes. says, drive for me. Which one and why? Well, really, it's a combination of both. That's how a little business works. But yeah, usually the team owner has the manufacturer, right? Yeah, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're all in contact with each other. But I'd have to say that I would go with the team owner because I feel that the team owner is more of a personal kind of relationship. And I think that's something that's very essential in racing. You have to get to know your people. You have to know who you're working with, and you have to work with them. A good driver is working with their entire team. And it's not just working with the car. Everyone works with the car. It's not just the driver. So if the line doesn't block, the quarterback gets sacked. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Awesome. Russell, good luck. Pleasure to meet you. Have fun. Yes. And uh, learn. The next couple of days will be awesome. I'm looking forward to it.